we we either hear of this time period, yeah, the the lunar calendar, seven month, yeah, then we call it the seven month festival, or we call it the hungry ghost festival, or we call it Zhong Yuan Jie. Zhong Yuan Jie is a Chinese um, festival, just like Qingming Jie. Yeah, and a lot of this festival has to do with the, the seasons. Yeah. Um, so the the Chinese have a certain practice. Yeah. Um, uh, but for Buddhists, Buddhism spread to China a long time ago. Yeah. Some thousand, maybe eight, five to eight hundred years ago. Yeah. Some uh, a very long time ago. So when Buddhism spread to China. A lot of the practices got assimilated into the Chinese culture. Yeah? Uh, in particular, those, those practices pertaining filial piety. Yeah? So this particular one is really about filial piety. Uh, in the Ulamanna Sutta, it is said that um, there was a time when uh, one of the Buddha's chief disciple. How many chief disciples did the Buddha have? <laughs> well, um, the Buddha had many chief disciples. Uh, he had two chief disciples, uh, the the two top ones, yeah, Venerable Sariputra and Venerable Mahamogalana. Venerable Mahamogalana developed what we call spiritual powers, psychic powers, if you will. Yeah, he was able to see beyond what the human eyes can see. He was able to hear beyond. He was able to do many things that. Humanly, very rare, if not impossible. Yeah? But, actually, it's still humanly possible. It's just a matter of developing ourselves. So one of the things that Venerable Mahamogalana, what he did was, um, when his mother passed away, um, you would think that um, the mother of two great arhans should be Buddhist. Yeah? should be wow, very devoted Buddhist, devoted Buddhist, devout Buddhist, and should be supporting Buddhism and so on. But it turned out that the two mothers of these two good friends, great Arhans, they were not Buddhist. Venerable Sariputra's mother uh, was a Brahmin lady, and she didn't believe in the Buddha, Dharma and the Sangha. Venerable Maha Mogalana's mother likewise. But Venerable Mahamogalana's mother uh, didn't just stop there. He even, she even criticized the triple gem, uh, disparaged the triple gem, sl slandered the triple gem, and said all kinds of things. Now, sometimes uh, she is portrayed as a horrible person in this way. But I sometimes wonder is it possible that it was perhaps because she was so, um, how should I say? Uh, attached to the son, you know. Now my, because of this, because of Buddhism, my son, my only son, left family, yeah, become a monk. And this is something that many Buddhists face, yeah. How many of you bring your children to to the temple? Oh, Anichio, huh? <laughs> How many of you have children, but? Didn't you didn't bring them to the temple? Okay, I don't raise, I don't raise. I'm very paisa. And there I say so. Many times, for many Buddhists, many Buddhist family, the fear is if my son, if my daughter, uh, were to come to the temple too often and learn too much dharma, oh, they will run away and become monks and nuns. Mm. Don't laugh. I know. <laughs> we all know. <laughs> Yeah, but the truth is, um, statistically speaking, it's very difficult. It's very rare. It's very slim. Very slim chance. If you kena, you can buy for the tiobipio. <laughs> Harder than tiobipio. <laughs> yeah, because there's only less than I think less than a hundred monks and nuns in Singapore. Yeah, there's about one point five to one point six million Buddhists in Singapore. You go and do the maths. You can do the maths. Let's multiply the, the number of monastics by two. 200 over. 
doesn't make a difference. It's still 0 0.0002 how many percent. So if your children, even Hei Heng Sui Sui, want to be a Buddhist, wow, see Heng. Not to mention become monks and nuns. So I suspect part of the reason could be, this is my speculation, that Venerable Maha Moggalada's mother was probably not too happy. Yeah? It is evident from Venerable Sariputra's mother. When Venerable Sariputra passed by their own house and get invited in for lunch dana. Sometimes we have lunch gathering here and then you all see my parents here eating together, you know. Um, but that, this was not the case for Venerable Sariputra or Venerable Mahamogalana. When Venerable Sariputra uh, visited the mother and have lunch there, the mother would actually say, say horrible things. Like, Hi, uh, some people with, with a good family, with mountains of wealth, good food, good clothing, choose to abandon all this and eat cold food. Eat sour porridge. Oh, the mother says things like that. Yeah. Venerable Maha Moggallana's mother said even worse things. So, it is said that when she passed away, she was reborn in a very uh, painful state, yeah, in the state of the hungry ghost. And Venerable Maha um, being an arahant with psychic power, was able to see that. Think about it. How many times have we heard? Have we heard people, and sometimes maybe yourself, when our loved ones pass away, the number one question people have for monks and nuns is, Sifu, where are my parents now? Yeah, I tell you, this is the number one question people ask Sifu. Never ask me how to meditate, ask me where my mother is. <laughs> and in, in a way, it's a beautiful thing, really. Yeah? Because um, on one hand, it's a beautiful thing. But on the other hand, sometimes I feel that sometimes it's a sad thing. Beautiful because um, it, it speaks of the, the love and piety, the devotion that that person has for the mother or father. And sometimes it's maybe an uncle or auntie, you know. Sometimes it's our grandparents. We want to know where they are. Not everybody has the ability like variable Mahamogalana. But from this you can see something. Arahans are not, are not robot, you know. Arahans are not, my mother has passed away, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. No, he was, he was concerned about where the mother is. So if your son or daughter ordain and become monks or nuns, you have nothing to worry. They have you in their heart. If your son and daughter wow, is very successful in life, become a CEO, maybe they have no time to think about you. So Venerable Mahamogalana, when his mother passed away, he was concerned, where is his mother? Uh, for him, he don't have to ask the Buddha. He just enters Samadhi, enter Jhana, and then, and then my alarm tell me to prepare to stop. <laughs> yeah, I know. I set the time earlier, because you know how I always exit time. So he, he used his psychic, uh, divine eye, and he observed that. Oh dear, my mother is reborn in the lower realms. And so with his psychic power, he, he went to find his mother, approached her, and saw her in this state of deprivation, suffering, with insatiable hunger. In Buddhism, we say that there are different states of existence. Yeah? Loosely speaking, or broadly speaking, we say there is the human and heavenly realm, which is more superior, yeah? more superior in the sense that there's um, lesser suffering. Of course, in the human realm, we can see many people suffering as well. But relatively speaking, it's still lesser, milder, and intermittent compared to those in the lower realms. The lower realms refer to the three, hell, animal, and hungry ghosts. Yeah, these three lower realms. 
At a later tech, uh, a later stage, there's that uh, the last the last section, which is about the asuras. Asuras is a very interesting category because it's kind of like between the heavenly and the animal realm. Yeah, some would say the asuras are something like demigods. Yeah, with uh, with with certain merits of the heavenly beings, but without that heart of kindness. Yeah? For they are said to be easy to give in to anger, to jealousy, yeah? easy to get frustrated and discontent, yeah? to be discontented. So, um, in, terms of, in terms of suffering, hungry ghosts uh, is not the worst compared to Avicii hell, yeah, the hell where there's no, absolutely no interruption of suffering, but still, no joke. Huh? And so, when Venerable Mahamoglana saw his own mother suffering in that state, he was filled with compassion. Uh, so the second thing I want to highlight here is, hello there, <laughs> Sumimasen. <笑>他說：“憑什麼？憑什麼我換了一個身體就不讓我上來？”So, um, when he saw his mother, he wanted to help her. Yeah, he wanted to relieve her of the suffering. Yeah, so with his uh, psychic ability, he manifested food and drinks for her. Yeah. But when he offered to the mother, what happened? She was not able to consume it. It is said that it turned into flame. Yeah? The moment he put it into the mouth, it turned into flame. Yeah. Now, when we read this text, sometimes it feels like, wow, quite extraordinary, huh? quite incredible. But think about it. Sometimes ourselves, sometimes friends and family around us. When sometimes they are so overwhelmed by emotions, when they are so, so down or depressed, or so angry, you can offer them the best food. You can offer them their favorite food even. To them it's meaningless. And they may even just brush it away forcefully. Yeah. And even if, you, if, even if they eat, they, they cannot enjoy it. Yeah. So in many ways, it is not so difficult to, to, to see that this is possible. Yeah. For in the Buddhist teaching, we say, this world is mind-made. Now, after much attempts, Varibha Mahamoglana saw that it's in vain. Yeah. So he went to see the Buddha, and the Buddha advised him and told him, in this world, there are different powers at play. You have your psychic power, your spiritual ability, but that is insufficient to overcome the power of karma. And what is karma? Our action. Yeah. So, first thing, arahants, enlightened ones, do not forsake their family, their friends. They, they are not devoid of emotions, of compassion. In fact, they have even stronger ones. Yeah. They will go and seek and try to help them. Yeah? They don't just say, uh, told you right, huh, Lama? Last time tell you, Pai Fu, Duan, right? Now you suffer. Woke guy, huh? No. Huh? <laughs> yeah? Instead, with compassion, still try to help. Yeah? Still try to help. Uh, but the second thing is, when the karma is ripening, difficult, if not too late to help. You cannot overcome karma with psychic power. Mm. So then what did the Buddha say? The Buddha said, well, you can try doing offering to the Maha Sangha, to the whole assembly of monks and nuns. And with that merit, extend it, dedicate that towards your mother. Yeah? And with the, through the power of the triple gem, 
then your mother may get relief. Yeah. And this is what he did. And this started the practice of the of this Ulambana festival. The Ulambana practice. Yeah. Where um, offerings is made to the Mahasangha while and they, they do some practices. 